are at the Rosa Station, which is the research extension center, and we're gonna evaluate a soil pit. That sometimes we get calls to identify nutritional problems or irrigation problems in the orchard. And one easy way that I want to teach you is to start evaluating the soil pit and to identify where your roots are growing. Sometimes the solution of the problem comes directly by observing that soil pit. Here you can see some of the essential tools that you would need to do a soil pit. One is a soil pick, or you can use a knife, you can use, um, you need water, diluted HCL, and a measuring tape. And for those who want to go further, also the soil color book, the Mansell book, is very helpful for additional information. So step one would be to identify the location. And for that, the main, the most important thing is that the grower knows generally where are the differences in crop, in nutrition, in vigor of the orchard. So identifying those areas is number one. Second, you need to develop your pit that in a place that is close to the root growth. So it cannot be in the middle of the row. It will have to be close to the grow growth of your roots and also close to where the irrigation system goes. Here we are in the pit. Make sure that you fit in the pit. And we will start by refreshing the soil, especially if you've done the, the soil, the pit a long time ago. So you need to refresh the soil. While you're doing this, you will notice that you have different, you need different pressure in the soil. And what you're gonna do is you will try to identify different layers in your profile, depending either in the moist of your soil, the color of your soil, or the pressure that you have to do. For example, here, if I go here, I feel that the pressure that I need in this area is, is more. So we have draw this line because I felt the change of pressure. And then if we, I keep going, it doesn't change so much until the end of the pit. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure what are these different stratas, called strata? which are layers in the soil. So we can see here that up to 11.5, we have one type of soil, and then below that we have a different type of soil. Another inherent characteristic of the soil is the structure. And we're gonna define the structure for its grade, size, and type. So here we are looking at the structure of this soil by collecting it in our hands. A structure can be weak, moderate or strong, depending on how distinctive it is. And size goes from very fine to coarse. This soil can be classified as moderate, fine, granular structure. So here you can see different type of a structure. And what you can relate to is the origin or the formation of your soil and also how the water moves throughout the profile of your soil. These are conditions that are highly inherent to the soil type. Once we've seen the, the, the structure, now we start looking more in depth and we want to see the size of the roots that are growing, but also the, the porous that we have in this soil. Both are, have the same um, indicators, so we can do them at the same time. And so we refresh again, and we can look at this uh, chart, which indicates the size of the holes that you find in your soil. And then you can relate to the porous and the root size of your soil. So now we're going to evaluate the texture. The texture is a very important indicator because it relates to the water holding capacity and the nutrient holding capacity of your soil. So here what we're going to do, first we have to moist the soil well enough so it doesn't uh, 
drain water out of your hands. So if it's still too dry, you can add more water. If it's uh, too wet, you of course you can add more soil. So this is the first step. If the ball holds together, the soil is not sand. And then we continue with the next step. Now we will try to create a ribbon by flattening the ball. The length of the ribbon will indicate the amount of clay that we have in our soil. Because this ribbon breaks before one inch, we don't have clay and we have a loamy soil. The third step, we get a little bit we put more water and then what we do is we do the filling of the soil. If we fill it gritty, it's sand, so it will be a loamy sand. If it feels soft, like flower soft, it's a silt. So in this case, that it feels very soft, and you can see also that it's very shiny and it gets stick in your, in your fingers. Another indicator, this means that it's silt. So in this soil, we have a silt loam. When we look to the profile, we don't see a clear evidence of a limiting factor in this soil. But here, when we start digging, we see that we have these white spots in the soil and it's all along this lower layer of soil, right? So this could be uh, calcium carbonate. And a, a way to identify this is that we start from the top and we put this HCl and you see very little effervescence. You see those effervescence in the top? Yeah. That was high actually. There, you don't have there or there or there, 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 and there you see. That effervescence means that what you have in this layer of soil is calcium carbonate. This will affect the pH of your soil. And of course the pH is a limiting factor for root growth. And this is a highly effervescent area. And this could be explaining why we don't have roots growing beyond this point. Take home message, it's important to look to the soil profile. There's a lot more other characteristics that can define the growth of your roots. And it's important to keep an eye on those limitations.